Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we'll be diving into the first part of the inventory system. In this video we will create the UI. You can get a preview of what we will be doing in this video right here. We've got an inventory with a cool blend in and blend out animation and we already have a hover effect on our menus. Additionally the game pauses meaning that when we jump down somewhere and press I the game completely freezes. We can still interact with everything and when we resume the game continues from where it stopped. So let's get started. Open the Epic Games Launcher, go to the library and start the Unreal Engine. For our small project I'm choosing the third person template and giving it here a name. Everything is up to your needs, press create and wait for the project to be created. Now. In our project, we'll kick things off by creating some folders to keep things tidy. First we've got the inventory folder, followed by the input actions folder. Finally, we add a widgets folder. Next, download the backgrounds from the video description and drag them to your desktop. Select Import Desktop and choose all backgrounds. And always remember to save everything. Moving on, let's create our first widget. I always name them WB for widget blueprint and then inventory for our inventory. Then open the inventory widget blueprint. You can dock it at the top here. Now add a canvas. Inside this canvas we'll place an image. Set the anchor points to zero and make sure to set everything to zero as well. You can of course choose the image you prefer. I'm going with the blue one. Next, let's display the inventory. Go back to the content browser. To open the content browser, from everywhere, press Control space. Then navigate to input actions. Here we right click, go to input and select the new input actions. The first one, we will name it Input Action Inventory. And the second one, we will name it Input Action Pickup. Now let's open our Input Action Inventory. And here we need to configure a few things. I'm choosing a trigger when paused, because I want the game to pause when we are in the inventory. But I want to be able to close the inventory even though the game is paused. Now we need two more triggers, pressed and released. We do the same for pickup. Here we don't need trigger when paused, since we don't need to pick up items when the game is paused. But we still need the same triggers here, pressed and released. Next we can set up the mapping. To do this we need the input mapping context and we name it IMC game input for example. Inside this context we select all mappings. We have input actions inventory and input actions pickup. Next let's start with our inventory mapping. Select keyboard input. I'm choosing the I key, but you can choose something else. Also, I want to add the face button from a controller. The face button top is the equivalent to the triangle button on a PS5 controller, for example. And 
And now we do the same for the pickup. I'm choosing the E key here. You can select a different key if you prefer. Then we also select the face button bottom, which would be a X button on the PS5 controller. To ensure that the keystrokes also work in the game, we need to make a few adjustments in the project settings. So go ahead to the project settings under enhanced input, where we can add a mapping context. Select our game input here, then you can close this. Save everything and we are ready to go. Next up, we want to see our inventory in the game. To do this, go to the third person folder. Here we have our blueprints. I like to move them into the content folder. If you do this like me, we need to get the redirectors to fix anything that may have been broken during the move. Simply select the redirector here and we can see there was an issue. Let's fix that up. As we can see, when we disable the filter, we no longer have any redirectors in the entire project. Next, we can delete this old folder. Save everything again and then we can open the third person character. To keep everything organized, I always create an extra graph. This one called inventory graph. Then inside here, we can right click to search for our inventory input and create an enhanced action. Here I want to check if it's valid after it's been pressed. From is valid, which means if it hasn't been created yet, we create a widget blueprint. In this case, it will be our WB inventory. Next, we promote it to a variable, in this case, W inventory reference. Then we add it to the viewport. Now, what we need to do is connect our inventory here, so if it doesn't exist, it will be created. Then we obtain the player controller. From there, we set the input mode to game and UI. The widget to focus on is, of course, our widget blueprint inventory. We don't want to hide the cursor, but we still get a player controller and set the that show mouse cursor to true and connect that. As I mentioned at the beginning, I want to pause the game. So here I set set game pause to true. Then compile and save. Next, we consider the case when the inventory already exists. First, we need to ensure whether it's visible or not. For that, we take the is visible and we connect it to a branch here. And if it's not visible, we add it back to the viewport and execute everything like we did at the bottom. So connect them. And if it's visible, we set set game post false. Then we want to remove the inventory from the parent. Get the player controller again. And from there, we set the input mode to game only.
Lastly, we set set show mouse cursor to true. Compile and save, and we can give it a try. Press the I key and go back. It seems to work quite well. Next, we can start designing the UI. To do that, let's go back to our inventory and add a horizontal bar to our canvas. Simply search for horizontal box and add it to the canvas. Now let's set the anchors to top. Everything goes to zero except for top and size. I think we can use here 15 and uh, maybe 25 or let's say 30. Next, we will add a vertical box and within this vertical box, we will place a button. And then inside the button, we will add some text. This will be our all text. And we name it TB All. In the font settings, we can switch from bold to regular. And of course, you can play around with the size or anything else. We want it as is variable. And then we go to the button B all. In the button settings under the normal, we select none. Under hovered, we can use rounded box as it's pre-selected. But uh, I like to choose a more transparent look. In the outline settings, you can adjust the radius if needed, but it looks good to me as it is. Let's test it by clicking compile and then play and hover over it. It looks quite nice, I think. For the rest, we can use the same effect. Click copy here and then paste here. But here for the press, we can make this one a bit darker to see the difference. Next, let's add a left padding of, let's say, 15 to our vertical box. Then we can start copying and customizing the other buttons. I will do this quickly here. And as the last part, we can focus on the animations. To do this, let's open the animations tab and create a blend in animation and the blend out animation. For the blend in, I don't want it to fade in from the game world itself, but from another image. So let's add another image here. This image will have a color from the original image, something around the edges to make it a little bit darker. Let's hide here everything. Set the anchors to full screen and press zero everywhere. Make sure to re-enable the visibility and then go back to the animation. We will select the image we want to fade in. Here it's number 44. We will give it a color and the opacity. Set the opacity here to 0 0.25. Go with the cursor to 0.5 and then just set the opacity back to one. It will create this small dot. And now we have a simple animation. To animate the content, let's wrap all of it in a canvas panel. Again, set it to full screen. 
This way we have an animation for the entire content of this canvas panel. Inside the canvas, set the size from the horizontal box back to 15. Go back to the animation tabs and add this new canvas. Give it a name like canvas inside to recognize it. Set the render opacity to zero. And after a few milliseconds, set it back to one. You can, of course, play with those values as you like. Moving on to the blend out animation. In this animation, we want to hide everything, including the image and canvas. You will again use the render opacity and for the lower part we will use color opacity. Set it to about 0 0.5 and zero it out again. And if you see this blue mark here you are in the animation still, and if you want to exit it, simply click here, and we are back in our UI elements as usual. To preview the animation, we can go to the graph editor and select play animation here. Lock the blend in animation inside the play animation and compile and test it. For the close animation, we need a custom event. Let's name it close animation. Essentially, we do here the same as before. Play animation and then get the blend out and add it. The small difference is that when closing this animation, we need to call something in the third person character. Go back to the third person character and from the reference, select the close animation we just created. We start the close animation from here and then yeah, make sure to unpause. And in between we should insert a short delay that lasts as long as our animation takes to close. Only then we should remove it from the parent. I will take here 0.5. Now we can test it. Blend in animation and blend out animation. I think that's already pretty cool. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you have any more questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or join our Discord. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, I would greatly appreciate your support by liking, subscribing and sharing. Stay tuned for more. See you in the next one.